Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi. That's right, I decided it was time to take an on-screen persona. And it's that time again. It's midweek and I want you to play some magic so you can win two free rare or better ICRs. This week's Midweek Magic will definitely have us on edge, as we're only able to utilize cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Streets of New Capenna, and most recently, Dominaria United. Uh, that's right, they're going to let us play standard, but uh, not full standard, uh, only three sets of standard. This is their way of trying to force the masses to be innovative. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Today's deck might be a little difficult to assemble for those of you who are new to Arena and didn't originally draft Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, but this deck's value only goes up as it rotates out of Standard and into Historic proper. So be sure to stay tuned. But before we get into all that, allow me to do the awkward thing and promote the channel. A while back, one of my viewers was kind enough to point out that we are the only channel putting out timely midweek magic content. So be sure to subscribe right here at the Planeswalker Stronghold for all of your future midweek magic needs because we will be bringing you a deck list or strategy every single week. So what do you say we put all this aside and just get to that? The nice thing about the Enchantress deck is it is built almost exclusively from cards in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. So it's kind of perfect for an on the edge deck. Uh, the one thing that hurts us a little bit is it takes away our budget rare land. Um, but that's not really crucial. And in fact, I'm only running three of the Kamigawa uh, tap common lands in here for a total of 22 lands. Uh, within the deck, we've got uh, Feng Shigeki as a, a nice turn one blocker. This is gonna hold back those early uh, one, two, three drops without too much problem and eventually should be able to trade up for you or punch in for early damage if they don't want to block it. Uh, the other one drop play that this deck enjoys making is uh, Generous Visitor. Uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. This card, of course, is, uh, along with Fanga Shideki and many others in the deck, is presuming that you've had a good opportunity to draft Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Um, otherwise, this deck is a bit hard to put together, but uh, very effective. And I think one of the best green-white decks you can be doing right now. Uh, March of Otherworldly Light is straight from your new player experience as uh, just a nice exile removal spell that's pretty darn flexible. Uh, Hold for Ransom is the, uh, the lockdown of choice right here. Uh, as it comes to us from Streets of New Capenna and is in your new player experience. Uh, Machiko's Reign of Truth, you did get one copy in your new player experience, but really you want four on this and uh, probably at least three. So if you haven't had an opportunity to draft Kamigawa yet, definitely have that on your shopping list. Uh, along with Spirited Companion, I I think we got some quantity of this, but honestly, off the top of my head, I really can't remember how many. Uh, it's a dog, uh, an enchantment, it draws you a card. It's just a good boy, pretty much all the way around. Uh, Kami of Transients is a fairly easy pickup through the jump in pack by similar name of enchantments. Uh, Shigeki is straight from your new player experience and uh, can allow you to do some shenanigans here um, either to recall a more important card from your graveyard back to your hand uh, or potentially put something uh, from your graveyard uh, or excuse me um, reveal the top four cards from your library uh, you may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped put the rest into your graveyard 
Um, so that allows you to get some stuff in your graveyard to maybe do some other hijinks with. Um, but I don't think we have any uh, serious recursive attributes going on here. Uh, Weaver of Harmony, all your enchantment creatures, aka pretty much your entire creature base, uh, gets plus one, plus one. The nice thing about this is for a single green and tapping the Weaver, uh, target activated or triggered ability you control from an enchantment source, you may choose new targets for the copy. If I remember correctly, sagas are considered triggers. Um, so copying that chapter one or chapter two off Machiko is really, really nice to be able to double up on those shenanigans. Uh, Jukai Naturalist, just a 2-2-2 two, two, two drop, uh, lifelink, enchantment spells that you cast cost one less. That's really nice because pretty much everything above this in the curve, with the exception of a couple of Planeswalkers, are all enchantments. So uh, they're going to want to kill this quick, and if they don't, uh, you get a pretty substantial advantage through the rest of the game. Uh, restoration of a Ganji or a Ganjo, I don't know, uh, comes to you straight from your new player experience. Uh, it lets you accelerate a little bit, um, lets you do some card filtering, and creates a 3-4 Vigilance enchantment creature, and that creature also creates a 1-1 one -one colorless spirit tokens. It's a pretty good deal. Um, if you have more than one, it might be worth running it, uh, but I think one is a pretty fair place to start on this. Uh, Touch the Spirit Realms is your enchantment-based removal for this one. Uh, it also gives you a uh, channel ability to allow you to blink one of your own creatures to save it, potentially. That's always nice stuff. Uh, Bear of Memory is honestly mostly in here as a placeholder. Uh, you can easily get this either through drafting or your jump in enchanting deck list. And it's a pretty fair card in here. Uh, giving one of your enchantment creatures plus one plus one and trample is a pretty sweet option and will often in games, particularly if you're able to use it in conjunction with Machiko. Uh, Wandering Emperor is just an all around good card and one of only two cards in here. Uh, no, excuse me, three that is not an enchantment. Uh, March of Otherworldly Light, we already talked about. Uh, Jakai Curse's Herber. When it enters, you put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control, and you have the option to channel it from your hand. Uh, discarding it, putting a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures you control. Uh, that can be done at instant speed and can make for a very nice combat effect. Uh, also, Bear of Memory can be triggered at instant speed uh, once it's on the field. Again, very nice. Uh, Elspeth, all around good Planeswalker, fits pretty nicely into this deck. Uh, she's not an enchantment, but that's pretty much the only downside here. Uh, if you have multiples of some of these other things like Weaver, um, or Kami, uh, this is one of the easy cuts to make as it doesn't really fit the synergy and doesn't have the same power level as some of the other non-enchantment cards that we're running. Uh, Blossom Prancer, more card selection, look at the top five, you reveal a creature or enchantment card from among them and put it into your hand. Uh, as your card, as your, uh, card selection is, uh, pretty much enchantments, three cards, and lands, you've got a really good chance of hitting this. Um, just just kind of ridiculous. And the rest go on the bottom in a random order. If you didn't put a card in this play, uh, you gain four life. And uh, the Greater Tanaki, our second favorite dog in this particular deck list, I'm running a single copy. Uh, there's a good argument to potentially run more, particularly because of the channel ability it lets you go fetch out a basic land, uh, all pun intended there with the fetch reference. But a 6-5 trample uh, that is also an enchantment is just a very solid potential finisher for this deck and well worth the spot.
Uh, just going to put this through a quick bot match uh, so you can see the synergies kind of roll out. This is not an ideal opening hand. Uh, not having an untapped green but having generous visitor is less than ideal. Uh, Kami of Transients uh, also, uh, I mean, it's not a bad two drop for this deck by any means. Uh, but not really what we're looking for behind Generous Visitor. Uh, so I'm going to mulligan this just to see if we do a little bit better. And uh, we we definitely did. Uh, Generous Visitor into Jakai Naturalist, and then followed up with Shigeki and Spirited Companion, and maybe another card uh, really is quite good here. And what do I what do I throw back here? Um, uh, I, think, I think we actually throw back a planes. Um, let's see how this plays out. And granted, this is just against Sparky, uh, but it definitely does demonstrate, even having to take a mulligan, just how much this deck can explode onto the field and uh, and do really kind of ridiculous things. Uh, we only got four mana, and most of the time we were able to do everything we wanted to do. Uh, the one issue that we had sometimes was being a little color screwed out of green. Uh, but, you know, dumb luck. That's how that goes. What's that? Y you didn't catch all that? Well, Matt would like you to know that any deck list applicable to this video can be found down in the doobly-doo. Hey, let's not forget, the whole reason to participate in these totally free midweek magic events is the prize support is awesome. And don't forget, if this video gets just 10 likes by 8 p.m. tonight on the day of release, I will be live playing this on my Twitch channel. And with all that having been said, don't forget, smash that like button like Ronnie J. Wood. And until next time, I'll see you in the arena.